Which reminds me. Hey! Hey! Happy, happy Tuesday! Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Did, anybody, right. did anybody sing happy birthday to you last week for your birthday? Uh, no? no? Not anybody from here. I did see a Facebook uh, happy birthday from you. Happy um, birthday to, to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, Dr. Doctor. Happy birthday to me. Thank you. Thank you. I'm 54. That's why I'm so excited about this workshop. You'll be able to go to Denny's on discount next year. <laughs> Thank you. Bruce is full of great ideas like that. All the retirement bargains. He is your point, man. Um, no, I actually was really excited about this workshop because I did have a birthday coming up. And uh, you know me, and I always tell you guys the same thing, that... It's okay to get older, right? As long as you get what? Healthier. So I'm excited to report to you that I'm a year older, but I feel a year healthier. And I'm definitely in better health uh, this year than I was last year. Praise the Lord for that. And the year before, and the year before, and the year before. And I'm going to take, uh, hopefully, many of you with me to the mountaintop, Lord willing. So I'm going to share some secrets with you tonight. And uh, we're going to let the cat out of the bag. But, uh, you know... <clears throat> We're going to play a little game here when it comes to aging. What are the most, uh, what, what, what do you think some of the most common uh, threads to this would be? Like, how do you know if you're getting old? What is, what's, a, what's a sign? What's a list? Huh? Aches, and Aches and pains. Good job. <laughs> Survey overweight. says. Overweight. Aches and pains. What else? Heart problems, right? Low energy, weight gain, right? Blood sugar problems, right? Bending Cancers, over. Huh? bending over, getting stuck, not being able to get back up. We're going to talk about that. <clears throat> Memory problems. You remember what I said? You remember or you forgot already? What did I say? What else? Wrinkling skin. Ah! That's the anti-aging that everybody comes here for. Show me how to get the young, youthful skin, right? And, uh, and what else? Lack of vision. What does that mean? Does that mean my, I can't see anymore? I gotta get better better glasses? Um, no, this is lack of vision. This is what we call the age gauge, right? So how do you know if you're really getting old? You listen to how somebody talks. Alright? If 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 they're if they're talking about the past, the good old days and the things that they did, they've gotten old. If they still talk about their dreams, their aspirations, and what they're still looking forward to, when you hear a 70-year-old or an 80-year-old or a 90-year-old talking about that, what they're going to do, or writing their next book, or this and that, their future is bigger than their past. <clears throat> and this is a primary component of staying youthful, and it first starts where? Not in the body, but in the what? In the, in the, in the brain, yes. So always make your future bigger than your what? Past. Yeah, the good old days were good old days, but the best is yet to come. So anti-aging and detox. What we're going to talk about tonight is a few keys to stopping the clock. Do you like that picture? <laughs> All right, so number one, um, you're either green or growing or ripe and rotting. We call this constant never-ending improvement. If you're not always looking to improve and get better, there's no such thing as cruise control. Your health isn't on cruise control. Your mind is not on cruise control. You always have to be pushing forward. So we call this constant and never-ending improvements. When you stop learning, you stop growing. And when you stop growing, you start what? Dying. So I'm always going to recommend that you keep coming back to the workshops because you have to stretch your mind. You have to stretch your concepts. You always have to stretch yourself beyond your comfort zone. Um, next workshop next month, incidentally, is what? Diabetes and blood sugar control. Now, most people that I take care of are either diabetic or pre-diabetic. There's a one out of two chance that everybody knows, that everybody you know, including yourself, is either diabetic or pre-diabetic. How do you know that? Because of the standard American diet. Somewhere on that A1C scale, you're going to find yourself, even if you don't have what you think is diabetes, I would recommend that you tap 
tap into this because there's a lot of great nutrition in this, not only to reverse type 2 diabetes, but also to help you lose weight, feel great, and really have your healthiest year ever and the best energy ever. Does that sound like a good plan? Yeah. All right, so <clears throat> there's a picture right there from 2007. How many years ago is that? 16 years ago? Wow. Something like that? Okay, so, and uh, there's David there. De um, Denise, you're in the turquoise shirt all the way back. You're about four or five rows back on the left in the turquoise shirt there. Mm -hmm. And I'm wearing red today. And you're wearing red today. Okay. So, <clears throat> so here's, a, here's a great example of many of you guys. Raise your hand if you've been, if you've been to like probably 70 or 100 or 150 workshops. Many of you guys have. Easily, easily, yeah. Because you keep, you're committed to constant never-ending improvement. You keep learning, you keep growing, you keep coming back to the workshops. You've been to this workshop probably a dozen times. Why do you keep coming back? Don't you always learn something new? Yes, yes or yes, yeah. yeah. So I want you to keep your eyes posted. You know, I send out emails every week with me, with, you know, it's like a video email. You listen, you'll pick up some good stuff every week. You'll hear what's on the horizon, what's on our plan as far as workshops coming up or different things about keeping, you know, on, on the cutting edge of health. So I want you to check, because if you're not getting my emails that come to you every week, then something's wrong with your email. They could be in your spam folder, but just let them know up front and we'll get you dialed in with that. I post on Facebook also. How many of you guys go on uh, the Facebook page, the social media? Yeah, please do. If you haven't seen it, I mean, if you do, if you do use social media, you can find us there. So make sure you stay plugged in. That's rule number one. The second key for aging gracefully or stopping the clock is what? Sleep. Proper sleep. You would be amazed at how, how many different levels of your health are affected when you don't get a good night's sleep. It, it shrinks your brain. Your hippocampus, the, the part of your brain that's uh, used for memory, and learning actually shrinks if you constantly have a lifestyle that is not supportive of good sleep. If you're running low on sleep, if you don't get deep sleep, if you don't get REM sleep, your brain becomes damaged. Did you know that? What does that lead to? It increases the levels of cortisol. What's cortisol? Does anybody know? It's a hormone. It's the stress hormone. And when that continues to run high, it also takes insulin with it. And when insulin runs high, you become insulin resistant. Does that mean sleep deprivation can cause diabetes? Oh, yes. <clears throat> oh yeah, you better believe it, yep. And what that does is it shunts the blood away from your brain, and that can lead to the onset of dementia, cognitive decline, Alzheimer's. So these are important things. If it goes on long enough, you're contributing to a brain disease, degeneration of the brain. Um, it increases your heart rate variability, which decreases your body's ability to handle stress, which weakens your immune system, increases your risk of heart disease, cancer, um, weight gain. And so, so we're talking about significant brain damage, which if you are tr uh, in this day and age, un unless you live under a rock or you're just in hiding, you, you can't not look around and, and see how many families are being affected by dementia, and Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. And this is a really important thing. We have to make sleep a priority. You can't just go from one day to the next or one week to the next or one month to the next in these sleep patterns where you're not getting enough rest. It causes damage at a deep level that oftentimes is, is irreversible. Um, so what's the strategy? <clears throat> First of all, you know, when you get good night's sleep, do you know what your brain is doing? It's healing. It's detoxifying. It's like taking the trash out. And you have to give your, your brain an opportunity and your body an opportunity to do that. It's vitally important that you hit that reset button. How, how much sleep are we supposed to get? Seven to eight hours. And uh, the more I read on this, the closer it is to eight hours. You know, consistency, consistent schedule is really important. We all know people who go to bed at 10 o'clock one night, maybe one o'clock in the morning the night before, right? Or, you know, nine o'clock and one night and then they go to bed 11 o'clock the next night and then there's never going to sleep at the same time. Do you know that one of the healthiest things you could do for your sleep schedule and for your brain health is to get in bed the same time every night? Your body will thank you for that and your brain especially. So important recommendation, cool, dark room. How cold should your room be? 
70, should be 76, 78. Some of you guys don't like being cold. Well, guess what? Sleep experts will tell you a minimum of 72 degrees. Some even post 65 degrees. So if you need to use extra blankets, it's critically important that your room is super cold and cool. Your body needs to cool down. Your body goes through temperature changes while you sleep. Did you know that? Yeah. Peak temperature changes. <clears throat> right about midnight, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, and you have to keep your body cool if you're gonna get a deep sleep and if you're gonna get REM sleep. And if you don't have your body at the room, right room temperature, you're not gonna be able to get into those zones. How about TV and LED devices, like iPads and looking at your phone, like Denise is right now, reading stuff, LED lights blaring in your, in your retina. You know what? It scrambles your brain. And it stops you from going down through the deep cycles to get you into those different levels of sleep. It's one of the worst things that you could do. Read an iPad, read your phone right before you go to sleep. Um, so same thing with, actually they say TV isn't, isn't necessarily bad. Now I'm, I'm starting to learn some things about watching TV in bed. <clears throat> the thing is that you know who you are. If you're one of those binge watchers and you're just gonna stay up all night, know your limitations. But for me, if, I, if I'm watching TV and like I'm on my side, I'm out. It, it puts me straight to sleep. Some of you guys are like that too. So in that case, that's not a bad thing. Um, how about caffeine? Tell me, tell me this isn't a problem. You know, you have a cup of coffee, a uh, cappuccino after dinner. You're not going to sleep on your regular sleep schedule. Who are we kidding? It's not going to happen. If you really want to get to sleep at a good time, let's say if it's, if it's 10 o'clock at night, if that's your time, you shouldn't be having caffeine past the early afternoon hours, ideally 1 o'clock. And I promise you, you will get to sleep. You will go to sleep a lot more easily when that happens. How about eating? You're going you're gonna to get a good night's rest with a full stomach? And oh, <clears throat> you should leave a minimum of three hours for your food to digest before you get in bed and go to sleep. How many hours? Three. three hours. How about exercise and sauna? What effect does that have on your sleep? Does anybody have one of those watches? Rodolfo, you got one of those watches? Some of you guys have these watches that measure your heart rate and it measures your deep sleep and your REM sleep. And if you ever track it on the nights that, you, uh, that you've exercised that day, or you've done sauna that day, you will notice that you get much more REM sleep that night. Spe speaking, of, speaking of going to sleep, I just heard crickets. <laughs> okay. All right, so everybody's phone's on vibrate right now. We just made the announcement. I have two people that have just helped me do that, right? So, 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 um, so does everybody got that? The sauna and the exercise are two things <clears throat> that brings your nervous system into balance for you to take advantage of those deep cycles of sleep and REM. And when you wake up, even if you don't sleep as long, if you get a lot of REM sleep and a lot of deep sleep, you wake up refreshed and your brain is firing on all cylinders. And you just have a good day. <clears throat> How many of you guys have... You know, you can remember the last time you just got a great night's sleep and you just wake up and you're just happy. Yeah. You're just happy to be alive. You know, you just, you're happy about everything. Nobody can do you wrong or rub you the wrong way. And that's just how it's supposed to be. But if you, if you check the box on all these, you're more likely to have good nights of sleep than less. And then the last one <clears throat> is something called Neuromag. But what's in Neuromag is something called Magnesium 3 and 8. Raise your hand if you've heard of magnesium. Raise your hand if you've heard of magnesium 3 on 8. What's, what is the difference between magnesium and magnesium 3 on 8? There are different forms of magnesium. The 3 on 8 is the only one that crosses the blood-brain barrier. And why is that important? Because it has a calming effect on your brain. <clears throat> so if you're laying in bed and your mind is racing, <laughs> and you're just tossing and turning, uh, since I started taking this stuff, I can tell you it's made a difference for me. It's not the be all end all, but I can tell you my sleep has been more consistent and has been better. And I've been getting more deep in REM sleep since I've been taking this stuff. So that's why <clears throat> I put it in there. So you know it's available, you know what to look for. Neuromag is our brand on it, but it's magnesium 308. Um, so question for you, what are the most physical and important tasks 
that you want to be able to do JP, let's say 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now. You want to be able to go for a walk. You want to be able to go on a trail and not worry if the trail goes uphill or downhill. You want to be able to take a mile walk or two mile walk, still be doing your five miles, right, Barbara? Something like that. Um, how about taking a trip to go visit your relatives? Are you going to be able to get on a plane? You know, 20 years from now, some of you guys are going to be mid 80s, 90 years old, right? Are you going to be able to walk on a plane? Or, is, or are you going to depend on somebody to wheel you on a plane? Let alone be, be able to take your 20 pounds of luggage and put it overhead. Are you going to be able to do that? Um, are you going to be able to pick up your grandchildren? If your grandchild weighs 30 pounds or your great grandchildren, whatever, are going to weigh 30 pounds, you know, are you going to be able to pick that child up off the floor or hold them when they're, when they're given to you? And think of if, if you are not able to do that 10 or 20 years from now, think, think of how awful that could be. You could feel about that. I know that would be horrible if I couldn't hold my my grandchildren or my great-grandchildren, or I couldn't travel to go visit them. That would be awful, wouldn't it? So we don't think about these things, but, you know, this is your future. And like the first slide says, the time to decide what kind of future you want is, is when. When is that time to decide? Now. now. Are you going to be able to open a jar, you know, a, a jar of pickles or a jar of almond butter? Are you going to be able to twist that off or you have such muscle atrophy that you can't even twist the jar. Yeah. So these are, these are important things. What happens if you fall? What happens if you fall? Life alert. <laughs> Life alert. So you need a paramedic to come and pick you up. That's a sign of aging. <clears throat> that you, that you, you're so worried about your physical health, right? You're so concerned about your physical weakness, frailty, that you have to wear a lifeline. You know, my, me, me, me thinking about that? Mm -mm. That's no S for me. No, senor. Mm -mm. No, no life alert for me. No. And no. I will be able to squat down, and I will be able to sit on the floor, and I will be able to get off, get off my rear end with one arm, with one hand. I will be able to do that. And I know, and I can help you calculate, if you want to do the same, Without assistance, imagine if you have a fall unexpectedly and you can't get up. What happens if you, you're laying there for Lord knows how long? You need strength. You need strength now and you need strength later. But you also have to account for how much muscle mass you potentially have now or could have versus 20 years from now. What happens as you get older to that muscle mass? You lose. You lose what? on average about 15% of your muscle mass every decade. So two decades from now, you're gonna have maybe 30% less muscle mass. There's muscle atrophy, just naturally, if you do nothing. But if you do something, is that gonna happen? No, no, that's not gonna happen if you employ some sort of resistance training. Now, all right, so if you wanna pick up a 30 pounds child, a grandchild, 20 years from now, if it's 30 pounds now, it's like the same as having to lift 50 pounds when you're 80 years old. Can you lift 50 pounds now? Can you? Yeah. Can you lift 50 pounds off the floor and hold it? And how long can you do that for? And this is what needs to be considered if you want to go through the calculations. Realistically, what is that 30 pounds going to feel like 20 years from now if you have uh, thirty percent less muscle mass. As an example, is everybody with me so far? Yeah. All right. Because if you're not there, if you don't feel <clears throat> confident in terms of you know your strength right now, in terms of you know your your muscle tone, your muscle mass, your ability, your grip strength, and that needs work. Uh, if you're not doing that now, it's not going to get better. It's only going to get what? It's only going to get worse. Yeah. And it's going to be that much harder. So. <clears throat> How you exercise now depends on what you'll be able to do then. Makes sense, right? So this brings us to number three. The most powerful longevity drug. Hands down, bar none, black and white, all the stops out. There's nothing more important that you can do for your health than exercise that will prevent, pre prevent dementia, Alzheimer's. Parkinson's, diabetes, 
heart disease, osteoporosis, fractures, falls. Hello? Have I left anything out in terms of what most people suffer from? What's the number one cause of death of someone in their 80s? Falls. Falls. Yeah. Something that you can prevent by what? Strengthening your muscles. Strengthening the muscle mass. So if you look at these people, who's a perfect example of that? Jack LaLanne. He was promoting fitness when nobody even knew what a dumbbell was or a barbell or a, or a gym. And he went well into his 90s with a vision of being a good example. He wrote a, wrote a book. He published a book. He, promote, he was promoting his book when he was 95 years old. And, he, and this is when he was 96 that picture was taken. So it shows you what possi what's possible. This lady, uh, Ernestine Shepard, 81-year-old bodybuilder in that picture, but the video we were playing, <clears throat> did anybody see it last week? Yeah, she was 85 in that video. She's still doing it. And she teaches classes. Does she have a vision? Is her future bigger than her past? You better believe it. And that's why there's no end to her progress. Every year she gets older, she gets stronger, and she gets healthier, and she wins more competitions. She does have a big why. She's doing it for her, her sister who passed away. But here's an interesting picture of a bodybuilder from 1981 to 2012. That's the same guy. And so, so it's, I'm just giving you examples of the, the fact that we cannot use age as an excuse. You know, it is possible to get older, to get stronger, to get more fit, to get healthier. And we see examples of this all over. So just... So I break this down for you in geek mode. Um, some of you guys like this type of thing, um, but I think we should all understand this, that when, you, when you're not exercising, you're losing what? Muscle, it accelerates muscle wasting. You're gonna lose muscle anyway, and if you don't use it, you will lose it faster. Loss of muscle increases fractures and falls, lack of oxygen to the brain, accelerates what? Brain disease. Yeah. Dementia and Alzheimer's. So that's why exercising um, consistently is the most powerful drug to prevent that. Poor cardiovascular fitness carries, listen to this. <clears throat> Next this. Everybody's eyes are open now. Good, I got you. <laughs> Poor cardiorespiratory fitness carries a greater risk of death than smoking. Well, Okay, so I want to hit a nerf here because, listen, I mean, we do these workshops every month, month in and month out, and, you know, you know who you are if you're coming to the workshops and you're getting the information, but the question is, are you making application? You know, or is this, is this just a... Is this just like a, a, a jacuzzi experience <laughs> where we just come to have a few laughs and then we just, we don't change. My, my wish and my hope and my prayer for you tonight is just take this, not even so much the information, but the inspiration, right, Marilyn? <clears throat> Remember when you left here after that diabetes workshop and you, ch and you changed everything? You just started working out, you were working out, you were in the pool two hours a day, and within a couple of months, you completely reversed your diabetes. And you start first thing in the morning. First thing in the morning, yeah. She drew a line in the sand. And that's what I'd love to see a, a few of you in here do. Draw a line in the sand and say, you know what? This is important. Am I fit or not? Because I'm at greater risk of death than if I was smoking. I might as well be smoking a few packs of cigarettes a day. So give this pre uh, careful thought and consideration because... This is what all the studies are showing right now. Grip strength. Grip strength. Do you have grip strength? How strong is your grip? Can you open a jar? Like if it's really rock solid, shut. Can you hold on to a bar and like do a full body hang for more than a few seconds? Because your grip strength they have shown is directly proportional to the longevity. This is what studies show. And where does that come from? It comes a lot from resistance training, weight training. Yeah, um, aerobic and resistance training increases your strength and your balance, which also reduces your likelihood of what? Falls, fractures. Yeah. Greatest factor reducing the risk of dementia, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's. <clears throat> Journal of the American Medical Association. 
probably the most prominent medical publication on the planet, said cardiorespiratory fitness is inversely associated with long-term mortality with no observed upper limit of benefit. What does that mean? Just, just like the opposite of greater risk of death than smoking, the opposite, the, the more cardiorespiratory fitness you develop, the lower your risk of death goes, and there's no end to when that stops. Your age cannot stop you from making progress with your fitness level. Here's an example, a 105-year-old cyclist. <clears throat> and um, this was from 2017. I, I showed this in a workshop uh, many years ago. And I went and I found this slide, and I'm like, I wonder if he's still alive. And I went and did some research uh, a couple days ago. No, he, he passed away um, five years after this. He lived to 109. Okay, so, so he won this event at 105. And this was a follow-up study. And, and they published this in a medical journal showing that not only five years before this, when he won his cycling event, he was f more fit at 100 years old than most 50 years old, but when they did the follow-up at 105, they found that he had a higher level of cardiovascular fitness than when he was previously studied. Yeah. So the following year after this, his doctors advised him to stop competing and not trying to win any more medals. And he said, okay, and, but he was still riding his bike 20 minutes a day. And he still did one more competition. But my point is, we're out of excuses. <laughs> it doesn't matter how old you are. Science has shown that age is not a factor. It doesn't matter if you're 90 or 100. You can still get more fit and healthy than you were the decade or two or three or five before. To me, that's exciting. I like that. That's, there's hope there. There's encouragement, isn't it? Am I the only one who's excited? Okay. So point number four. And you know what, let's, let's, let's just park on this for a second, because I've given you concept, but what about application? Like, what's a, what's a good mix of this? What does that look like? I, I talked about weight training, right? So do you have to go to a gym to lift weights? No. You don't have to. You can just get some heavy hands, and you can work every muscle in your body with heavy hands. How many days a week? Like, if you want to make, make application with this, and you really want to work this into your future, how many days a week should you be doing resistance training? Probably yeah, I would say at least three days. At least three days a week, yep. And that's a good place to start. That's a really good place to start. But after a while, you're going to get strong enough to where the 10 pounds or the 5 pounds isn't going to do much for you anymore. At that point, you may take the next step and start you know, getting a, either a trainer or going to a fitness center or something. You know, going to the next level. Because that's really what this is about. You, you don't ever want to plateau and stay there because the body doesn't continue to make progress at that point anymore, right? So starting off, <clears throat> just get some heavy hands three days a week, resistance training. The other three days a week, what can you do? Walk, walk. Yeah, walk. Ride yeah, walk, ride a bike, shake it up. Just do something for like 20, 30 minutes every day. You don't have to do an hour. You know, some people say you have to do, but it's just to start. Do something every day. Take a day off on Sunday, but you know, just do, do, just do something every day. Do a little bit every day. Resistance training one day, aerobic fitness the next day. And yoga doesn't count for that. Stretching, toning, Pilates doesn't count for one of those sessions. I hate to tell you. I mean, nothing wrong with those things, but studies show that it doesn't have the effect on the brain and the health benefits of resistance training and aerobic training. Everybody with me? Yeah, I can go into the reasons why, but not right now. <clears throat> but if you, want, if you like yoga and Pilates, I would encourage you to do it. You don't have to not do it, but just know that it's not a substitute. All right, <clears throat> also important for anti-aging is what? Eliminate toxins. Where are toxins formed? Where, where, I mean, what kind of toxins do we see? Well, prescription drugs are one thing. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to stand here and tell you to stop taking your prescription drugs, but I will tell you it's a good goal to have to reduce or eliminate those which you are on, if it is possible. Um, one of the things that impairs memory or can mimic uh, memory problems and mimic symptoms of, of dementia and uh, cognitive decline 
are these medications here, anxiety medications, insomnia medications, you gotta be careful of those. When you start exhibiting uh, memory issues, forgetfulness, cognitive issues, and you're on these medications, this is a good reason to look at the side effects, go Google search and see if this is related because this is known to cause some of these. Antidepressants, steroids, anti-inflammatories, pain medications, chemotherapy, Tell you that firsthand from what I've seen. Toxins from foods. Toxins from foods. Yeah, we're gonna, that's going to be the next thing we're talking about. Statins. Statins. You know, they they definitely affect your brain, your memory. You you know, if you are taking them, be very very careful with that. Be very wary of that. And uh, come to come to my next Heart Smart workshop or watch the one from last month because you might reconsider. And then of course flu shots, which we don't see anymore because we don't have the flu. We have COVID. <laughs> So, so it's not COVID. So it's not it's not flu shots anymore. But I'll shut up now before they take my video down off of YouTube. Because if I keep talking, it's uh, it's medical misinformation, right? So that's that's what it is now. I can't say what um, people need to hear. Um, but you get the message here. It's it's memory impairing side effects that you need to be looking for. Drug interactions. You know that's what is involved. The more medications that you're on, the more likely you're going to have. Interactions from that, which you know, usually results in taking more prescriptions to counter out the side effects of those medications. Hospital visits, increased risk of medical complications. I, you know, it happens. It happens. All right, Donna, you told me a story yesterday. Just, you just want to be proactive because when you think everything's going hunky dory. You're not promised tomorrow. You don't know what's around the corner. And if you don't have a plan every single day that's going to undergird your health and going to strengthen your nervous system and your immune system and, and put, on your, put on your armor, not just spiritually, but physically, to fight off disease, it just, disease doesn't care how busy you are. It doesn't care how forgetful you are. It doesn't care about your schedule. It doesn't care whether or not you remember to exercise or eat good or get your adjustments. Disease doesn't give a flying hoot. It's always trying to take you down. And so we have to be diligent and militant about making sure we don't give up any of these. Because when it comes to your health, is there anything more important? No, we find out when we lose it. When our life hangs in the balance, Wishing, hoping, and praying our brother makes it. You know, so I don't want to see anybody ever be in that position. So that's why this cannot be a jacuzzi experience, yeah, right? Reactor. Yeah. Other toxins include outgassing, um, furniture outgassing. Yeah, and here it is. Here it is. We're gonna we're gonna show you that right now. So <clears throat> off gassing, there you go, you're one step ahead of me, Marilyn. So, um, so, the, so formaldehyde, you know, in the mattresses and, and, and pillows, and you have, you have a lot of the products that they now make, like a lot of like a, a MacBook or a, or a, an iPhone. They they these things are laced with ben, benzenes. Oh my gosh! It's um, you know you have to look at the labels. You have to do your research. You have to look into these things. Because it has, it's going to off gas cleaning. You know, like if you get things dry cleaned, you guys know you're supposed to leave it outside, let it off gas. Uh, you get a new mattress that's rolled up in a in a box, and then it and then it takes form in a room. Don't let that off gas in your house. Put that somewhere else because that's not a good thing, right? All right. So we have also lead um, in the paint. And you know, if you if you live in an older house, and uh, you have to you have to know how old that house is because back then they used lead in the paint and they painted over it, so that's a source of an issue. What's in the water? Are, is there lead in our water? Yes, there are accept what they call acceptable levels of lead in the water, <clears throat> and more than two thousand water systems across the country have higher lead levels than Flint, Michigan. And you can never be too sure about how much toxicity is getting through our water system. I have a question. Yes. I don't really, not really sure on the bottled water that we buy. 
All right, the bottle. Is it poured out of faucets and you just don't know it? Yeah, you'll never know unless you bottle it yourself. <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> the only the only way to know is to have yourself a filter. Either get whole house filtration for your water or get one of those countertop filtration systems. Mm -hmm. That's what I use. I fill up my water bottle every day with uh, something out of a filter. And, uh, and, and then even at that, you know, we travel, we go out of town, we're in hotels or we're out of... So, that's why you, you're, you're never gonna, gonna be 100% tox, toxin free. But I am going to kind of reasonably give you some suggestions to help your body boost its detox capacity. As long as you're getting more out than, than, is, than is coming in, that's the best we can hope for in today's world. Does that make sense? Yeah, the lipstick, and the, the 33 lipsticks that they um, studied, I think like 26 of them had um, lead in them. And isn't, isn't your skin permeable? That lead goes right through your skin. All the cosmetics, nearly 900 of the chemicals used in cosmetics are known to be toxic. Um, we have in our, um, in our uh, deodorants, there's aluminum in some of the deodorants. I just found that I pulled, I, my, my son bought one. He was up in college. I'm like, are you kidding me? You're using this stuff. It's got, look, it's got aluminum in it. The Roland's. Um, and then the and then the soap and the and the toothpaste sodium lauryl sulfate, these are carcinogens that cause cancer in laboratory animals. Did you know that? So um, these are all important things. And then uh, of course we have, you know, shots. If you had flu shots, the childhood shots, and these all have some level of uh, thimerosal. No different than amalgam fillings. Um, it all builds up, and especially it builds up in your brain. And then we have uh, the pesticides, the herbicides, but the, but the thing that <clears throat> really is affecting the brain health of our population, younger and older, more than anything now, is this thing called glyphosate. What's it called? Glyphosate. glyphosate. Does everybody know what glyphosate is? It's the active ingredient in Roundup, and um, it, it has nothing to do with what you're using in your yard, uh, your weed kill in your yard. They're putting this on our food sources. They're putting this on all the corn and all the soy uh, products, and that comes into our food chain. What does it come into our food chain in the source of? Um, our meats, our potatoes, our drinks, our condiments, GMO uh, protein filler, the cows are fed GMO. If you don't get organic, what you're getting is the application of this glyphosate, which is concentrated in the corn and the soy, which is basically used, if you look at in the ingredients of everything that you eat or your condiments, and, I mean, unless you're looking at the labels and you're buying otherwise, if you're not doing that, you would be surprised at how much everything in your pantry has corn and soy in it. It really is amazing. So just know that if, if it doesn't say organic and you're not buying organic, it is laced with this thing called glyphosate. Now. What's the big deal with glyphosate? Glyphosate opens the blood-brain barrier and takes all the toxins and brings them in like a Trojan horse. What? Yeah. Dr. Stephanie Senna did this study at MIT, and this was showing the application of glyphosate from 1989 all the way to 2009, and how many thousands of tons were increased in its application. And then that red line right there show, shows you along with the glyphosate application, the yellow lines show the number of deaths from senile dementia that have increased commensurate with the application of glyphosate. Can everybody see that? All right, so now you, now you look around and you see how much dementia and Alzheimer's there is, <clears throat> which we didn't see like 30 years ago to the degree we're seeing now. And this is a huge part of it. Toxicity is a huge part of it. I think the bigger part of it is that we don't have awareness of it, number one. And number two, we're not placing enough emphasis on our detoxification systems to support it to get it out. Is that making sense? Yes, Rosita. I have been thinking that when we buy organic Right. Yeah, we're trusting. We're trusting blindly. And it's a big problem. You are right. You are right. 100%. Dr. Yang, I have a question. Yes. Um, 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 I
Yeah, I'll take one more question and then the rest will leave for the end. Yeah. You talked about eliminating toxins. A lot of us have water filters. Mm -hmm. and if you don't change those filters, the toxins build up in there. Yeah. And you as well as just be yeah. Regularly. Yeah, no kidding. You got to change the filters very regularly, at least six months. So, how do you know if how do you know if you have more toxins coming in than your body's able to get out? Well, it's you know the cells in your body are kind of like buckets, and you know if you fill if you overfill a bucket, what happens? It starts pouring out, and in your body, that pouring out comes in the form of symptoms. So when your bucket starts overflowing, you start feeling what tired, fatigued all the time, every day, and you have more droopy days, more poopy days than good days. You know, if you, if you have trouble remembering the last time you woke up and you actually felt good, chances are you're toxic. Uh, depression, anxiety, insomnia, um, it can affect your sleep for sure. Irritable bowel, allergies, headaches, including migraines, and of course, muscle pains if your body aches. These are all like the most common signs of toxicity. There are more. But these are the most common. So, um, so what's the best way to measure your toxicity level? Because again, you know, the, for everybody here, we all, I hope we all realize the question is, are we, are we, it's not are we toxic or not, the question is how toxic are we? And there are two tests that we utilize. There's a questionnaire, but there are two um, <clears throat> objective tests that we use to see your level of toxicity. For those of you who are not aware of this, there, there are many of you in the room that, we, that don't know that we do this. One is a visual contrast sensitivity test. And it's basically something that you hold in front of you with these cards that have lines on them. <clears throat> so you try to read the lines, which way the lines are going. And if you're highly toxic, it, it affects the optic nerve to where you cannot discern sharp visual contrast. And so that's a good way to determine whether or not you're toxic or how toxic you are. And if you're very toxic, and you're going through the process of removing that from your body and your brain, then you retest and you can actually see your vision improve. Another test is something called uh, the meta-oxy, and that's a, um, basically a urine test. We put a reagent in there, and we take a sample of your urine, and we see the color. And if you're highly toxic, there's massive cellular inflammation. Massive cellular inflammation. And so that color will distinguish, again, your level of toxicity. And from those two tests, you can see the, how urgent or not it really is that you, do, you embark on some sort of program sometime soon to pull this stuff out. Now, I, I think you need to understand, everybody knows and has heard of detox. You know, like, you could do a cleanse, you could do a juice fast, you could do a this fast or that fast. You could use these herbs and things like that. <clears throat> but when it comes to heavy metals, lead and mercury, not, you're, not, you're not doing anything with that stuff. You need a very specific protocol to pull those metals out of the deep cellular resource, uh, sources in your body and your brain. And that's what, that's what this program is designed to do, not just get all the toxins out, but out of your brain also. So it's a three-step process, basically. We do that testing here in the office, and if, if you're a candidate, then there's a, there's a, there's a three-step process that you go through. First, you have to prepare your body to detox. You have to prepare the cells. You have to reduce the inflammation. You have to get the cells up to par, up to speed, so that they can function properly to detox. And then, then after that, if 30-day period of time, the next phase is the body phase. That's when there's a concentration gradient set up to start pushing the toxins out of the body cells. And you know, you have to also prepare your liver, your gut, your kidneys, your lymphatic system. You can't just jump into detox. I've seen some wild, bad reactions when people do that without preparing the body for detox. But if you prepare the body for detox, there are amazing changes that you see in your energy, your sleep, uh, your moods, your mental clarity. And you start seeing that from the 30, usually 30, 60 days. And then the last phase is the brain phase. And that's where the magic happens. That's the only way that you get the metals out of your brain and these pesticides also, the glyphosate. So some of you guys have done it. I do this at least once a year. It's a 90-day uh, program. But again, my recommendation is that if this is something that is important to you and you want to learn more about it, start with the test. Ask Deborah or Tamara to make an appointment to do these tests, and they can do that before you leave. And I would highly recommend it because when I do it, I can tell you 
like black and white. It's the difference between the lights being off and the lights being on in the way you feel in your health. And, um, you know, it's you got to cycle through it. Every once in a while, you have to give this a little bit extra attention. Otherwise, it catches up with you. So um, that's all I want to say about that. Number five, <clears throat> lifetime chiropractic wellness care. So um, if you read this along with me, this comes from the Journal of the American Medical Association. It's about posture and longevity. Deviations in body center of gravity, which is poor posture, have resulted in intestinal problems, hemorrhoids, varicose veins, osteoporosis, hip and foot deformities, poor health, decreased quality of life, and a what? Shortened lifespan. That, what that is showing you is that there was a, a correlation between people and their poor health and their longevity. The worse their health, the shorter their lifespan. The people with the best posture had the longest life expectancy. Do you know when that was published? It says it right there, 1957. Yeah. So, long been established how important posture is with your health. And this is foundational. You can eat good and exercise till the cows come home, but if you're doing, you're going more and more in this direction, it's all for naught. That's what that's what that study shows. Here's one <clears throat> published in the Journal of the Manipulative and Physiological Therapeutics. They studied 311 chiropractic patients, 65 and older, who received maintenance care for how long? Five years, five years or longer versus healthy citizens the same age. Raise your hand if you've been under care here five years or longer. Is there anything been under care here 10 years or longer? 15 years? Okay, so, so you guys would probably be nodding your head. The rest of you uh, are neophytes, so to speak. You're no less loved, but encouraged to know that you haven't seen the best yet. Here's, here's what this shows. People under chiropractic care five years or more, the wellness patients, the chiropractic patients, had 60% fewer hospital missions, 62% less surgeries, and what? 85% less pharmaceutical costs. Okay, so if you are sitting in your chair in this room and your eyes are open and you want to go to doctors less, go to less hospitals, take less medications, raise your hand. Okay. So then the question is, when do you ever stop getting adjusted? Yeah, so how could this not be a part of an anti-aging solution? Power of a chiropractic adjustment directly influences your brain. There's something called your autonomic nervous system. Bruce, remember this? You got the sympathetic, which is the fight or flight, and you got the parasympathetic, which is the rest and digest and healing. What the adjustments do is stimulate the parasympathetic, and as a result of that, what we see is your digestion improves, your metabolism improves, serotonin and dopamine, your feeling of well-being and concentration, <clears throat> the neurotransmitters, improve your growth hormone, um, hormonal balance, cellular immunity, hormonal balance. Wouldn't that be important for bone health and also skin wrinkling, hair, nails, all that stuff, right? Hot flashes. What is that? High flashes. Uh, high flashes, yeah. So all these things, concentration, reproductive performance. So chiropractic adjustments affect all that at the same time, decreasing your cortisol. Remember we said that stress hormone? That increases your risk of of dementia, diabetes, heart disease, cancer, weakens your immune system. The adjustments help lower that, lowers your blood pressure, lowers your heart rate, lowers your blood sugar, lowers your lipids, insulin resistance, all that from an adjustment. Isn't it amazing how you could take a drug for all 20 of those things? <laughs> you could take 20 different drugs and get one adjustment and do the same thing. Wow, what is that worth? Chiropractic adjustments unleash human potential and performance. Anybody remember him? Evander Holyfield? Born again Christian. Man of God. I remember when he knocked Mike Tyson's lights out. First thing he did was give God praise. But he gives chiropractic props here too. He said, I have to have an adjustment before I go into the ring. I do believe in chiropractic. I found going to a chiropractor three times a week helps my performance. The majority of boxers go to chiropractors to get that extra edge. Heavyweight champion of the world. Did you know that? There's not, a, there's not an, a, a professional athlete that belongs to a team on this planet in any country that doesn't have a team chiropractor. Back when I did it, when I was a team chiropractor 30 years ago, it was a novel idea. And, and I was thankful the coaches understood because they would basically have me adjust all the team members before the game. 
not clean up their mess after. Because they wanted it for what? Performance, right? Tom Brady, as long as I see the chiropractor, he said, I feel like I'm one step ahead of the game. Uh, Tiger Woods, he's been going to chiropractors as long as he can remember. His parents took him to chiropractors. You know, while, while he was a wee little boy. He said, it's as important to my training as practicing my swing. Why do you think they use chiropractic adjustments? For their what? Peak performance, so that they could be at their best because they have millions of dollars of their career on the line. Uh, is your life any less important? Right. Raise your hand if you want to be at 100% of your God-given potential. That's what the chiropractic adjustment does, right? So what is the purpose of a chiropractic adjustment? When you come in and you lay down on the table, what's the purpose of my adjustment? Is that what I'm doing? Right? Just trying to crack your spine. Woo wee! Crack me here, crack me there, right? My my massaging your back, my massaging the muscles. Is that what I'm doing? Uh, right here, doc. Right here. Right here. You know, <clears throat> I mean, I you know, I don't want anybody to be in pain, but you know, don't get me off track. You know, I'm trying to turn your power on. I'm not the healer. You know, you already have the greatest healing uh, master inside of you. You know, think about it. You cut your skin or you break a bone. It's not the it's not the cast or the band aid that's going to heal you, right? You're here. Healing comes from inside. It doesn't come from my adjustment. What does my adjustment do? It removes the interference from that nerve so it can bring that amazing intelligence that gave you life through your body to express itself at 100%, to your kidneys, to your heart, to your prostate, to your lungs, to your liver, right? At 100%. Because when those organs function at 100%, what happens to your risk of disease? It goes down. Can you feel that risk of disease going down or going up? No, you can't feel it. There's a huge difference between how you're feeling and how you're functioning. The adjustment has nothing to do with how you're feeling. Everything to do with how you're functioning. Yeah, because what controls function in the human body is the what? The nervous system. The bones are only there to protect the nerve. The, the bones are there to protect the nerves. When they go out of alignment, they interfere with them. And again, you may not feel the pressure on the nerves until it's been there long enough. And by that time, again, we have to deal with the cause of it going way back. So to correct subluxations, regardless of where you may hurt or not hurt that day, you know I do my analysis, <clears throat> right? I always check your legs. I always palpate. I check the range of motion. I check the temperature at the what? Atlas. Atlas. Yes. Everyone knows what the atlas is, right? Yes. All right, if you don't, ask me the next time you're on the table. That'll be fun. Okay, so that's my family down there. And uh, that was from last Christmas, this past Christmas. And what do you notice? I'm the shortest one in the picture. <laughs> I don't know. I tell you. Yeah, all my kids, they were all over 10 pounds when they were born. We don't make them small in our house. So now the youngest is the tallest. He's 6'4", Josh is 6'3", Leon is 6'2". Leon is, uh, he's the one all the way on the left. And he just went to Pensacola. He's finishing his freshman year in Pensacola. And do you think adjustments are important to him? He's been getting adjusted since the day he was born. Within the first hour he was born, I adjusted him. He's been consistently adjusted. Has he ever been to the doctor? Never had a prescription drug. None of my children have. So is chiropractic a big reason why? You better believe it. So it's not just for getting them healthy while they're young, but it's also for keeping them healthy when he leaves my house. So what did I do? Who's gonna adjust him? I picked up the phone. I called the chiropractor. I, I interviewed chiropractors to see who was the right one in Pensacola, and I found somebody, and I got him on a plan, just like you guys are on a plan. I found somebody who didn't take them in for pain relief, you know, like, like a joint or some of these other ones, no long-term plans. That's not what I want. I want somebody who has my son on a plan. He's on every other Tuesday. He goes in and he gets adjusted. He gets scanned. He gets x-rays. Same type of care that you guys do. And I pay for it. He wanted to give it to me. He's like, no, 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 you're a chiropractor. You're my brother. I'm like, uh-uh. I'm paying for it. If I don't pay, I don't value it. Let me tell you how much I value my child's health. I'm paying for it because that holds you accountable for his health now. And, the, and, and Josh, he's up in clinic now. He's giving adjustments. He's getting adjusted. And Gavin, uh, he's... 
<laughs> the he's a compliance issue only because he's still at school. But he's probably in here still every three weeks or so when my wife can round him up and remember. And my wife was just in yesterday. And I go every Monday. Am I telling you anything to do anything that I don't do with my family? Why? I, so, you know, if there was a choice, Shaq, like you tell me I can only pick one thing, my, my, my supplements, right, my Ultraplex Complete Clean that I love every day, or my, um, you know, exercising every day, or adjust, you know, get my adjustments. You stick me on a desert island and I can only get one thing, I'm taking a chiropractor with me. I'm leaving all the other stuff behind. Leaving my gym equipment behind, my supplements behind, taking a chiropractor with me. <laughs> yeah. I have to take my bow, yeah. Thank you for that. I stand corrected. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, so, and then just, uh, you know, I was, I was thinking about this one guy who, um, he was a guest at our workshop, and he was sitting here, he was visiting from the Bahamas. His name was Jamal. And his, his aunt said, you know, you should, you should get checked after everything that Dr. Yachter just talked about. You see, the spine is like, the circuit breaker, all the nerves go to all the different parts of the body, and if you know you have <clears throat> interference there, it could lead to different problems. Like in the neck, it could lead to headaches, insomnia, high blood pressure. If you have interference to the nerves in the, your 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 lower neck, it can cause thyroid problems. Your mid back, digestive problems. Your pancreas, your kidneys, your reproductive organs, painful irregular periods, things like that. So he looked at it, and he was in. Um, I think he was he was in medical school. She's like, oh, this is interesting. So he made an appointment. He didn't have any symptoms, right? He didn't have any neck pain or back pain. He made an appointment because he wanted to have an evaluation of his spine and his nerve system, because what I said made sense. So during the consultation, <clears throat> he was telling me that um, he, the only thing that he could think of that he just, he, he noticed about himself was that he just felt disassociated from like having any feelings towards people, you know, being <clears throat> apathetic, right? You know, like, didn't really care whether, about people's feelings or whatever. Like, he was, like, just disconnected. There was something he knew that was just, like, not right. And I went through his trauma history, and he said, no, nothing, nothing going on. So we went and did the exam, and I found subluxation, particularly in his neck. Like, that was the worst part. It was really obvious. And I took an x-ray, and then the next day, I went over the x-rays with him. And I showed him this top bone in the neck here. I said, it's, it's really way out. Your scan was all red up there. And that bone is just hanging up into left field. And I said, it's, it's bad. And you see what that causes right there. It causes nervousness, anxiety. Um, it inf interferes with your sleep, insomnia. And he said, you know, it's interesting. He's like, what would cause that? I said, well, probably some sort of trauma. But you didn't tell me anything in your trauma history. He said, well, after I left here, I was thinking about it, and I, I did have some trauma. He said, my, my dad was physically abusive to me, and, and, um, and there, was, there was trauma to my head, and do you think that could have caused it? I said, when did that happen? He said, about 10 years ago. I said, well, there's about 10 years with the degeneration there, so highly, highly probable. And he, and he said, well, is it correctable? I said, yeah. So we got him adjusted, and he got up off the table. And I said, don't be surprised if you sleep really good tonight, you wake up very rested, and you feel happy tomorrow. And he thought I was kidding. <laughs> and so he came in the next day, and I said, so how'd you, how'd you do after your adjustment? He's like, I slept for 14 hours. <laughs> he's like, he's like, he said, I, I, I feel, he's like, I feel happy. That's all he could say. He's like, I feel happy. He's like, I, I, I just, I don't, I don't know any other way to describe it. I just feel like this peace that I've never felt. And um, I don't know how else to describe it. I said, well, I can tell you what that is. I said, we just, we, we're rebalancing your nervous system. And, and that's the power of the chiropractic adjustment. He didn't have any neck pain or back pain. But what did he have? He, he, he had a nerve system that was short-circuiting. And... You, do, you don't know how bad that could have gotten. That could have been the next person to unload on somebody in road rage in, in uh, evening traffic. Or God forbid, you know, what you see on the news today. You know, take, 
take take a take a gun and go into a convenience store or or Walmart. You know, you know. It, I think we all know that weapons don't kill people; people kill people. And I will tell you, one step above that is subluxated people who have chemical imbalance because of that, because they haven't slept, and the nerve system is just way out of whack. They kill the most people. All right. So I can't tell you what a different place this world would be if people were equal to the expression of their 100% potential that God had intended them to be if they had a chiropractic adjustment. And can you imagine what that would do? So that's, that's what breaks my heart. I mean, here's a, a great story about somebody who, you know, had an amazing experience, but what about the other... You know, millions of other people out in the community that, that are looking for help in the form of another prescription or another psychiatrist or this or that. They're looking for it outside, but the, but the, but the cure is where? It's inside. We just have to find the interference and remove it so that the body can heal itself. And that's what people need to understand. Now you start telling them about chiropractic, and it's just a block, and they just can't get it. It blocks them from understanding. It confounds their thinking. <clears throat> What's the only way to get them connected? Bring them to a workshop. Refer them to our office. Or, or get me out into, right, Cal? Get me to your school. Franklin Academy had me speak there. And that, that woke me up, boy, let me tell you. So um, for those of you who are watching on Facebook, guess, anybody, if you, if you don't know what your spine looks like, you need to look at, you know, if you haven't had an x-ray lately, that can literally predict what kind of diseases could be developing now or in the future. And if it's, if it's crooked, obviously the goal would be to get it straight. And that's what we do. You know, we, 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 we use NASA space technology with the scans. You can see that scan on there is abnormal. That's a, that's a person that sometimes has those symptoms, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes we get those scans and they don't have symptoms at all. But the idea is to see those scans getting better and better because that shows how the function is improving. And that's the evidence that your future will be healthy, not how you feel, right? People feel great and then drop dead of a heart attack. What good is that? Okay, last one, dietary changes, right, Marilyn? Replace the bad fats with good fats. <clears throat> Change the meats that you're eating. And, and, and the dairy it should, should be grass-fed, right? And uh, get those trans fats out, go with grass-fed butter, get your blood sugar under control. Yeah, all of these changes help to reduce the inflammation of the blood vessels in the what? Brain. In the brain. Helps to manage your insulin resistance. And the strongest correlation with Alzheimer's they're showing now, the predictor is with your what? A1C. So you need to be getting that A1C down to five and a half. See where it says pre-diabetes, 5.7 to 6.4? You need to, you have to have a goal to get it under that 5.7, really under 5.5, <clears throat> if you're way up there. Otherwise, if it stays up there too long, you know, it stays off of your life. Everybody got that? So, Journal of Alzheimer's Disease, four times the risk of cognitive impairment if you're having these carbs on a regular basis. Breads, pasta, you know, your potatoes, your bagels, granola bars, all, all that stuff you see in there, um, we pay the price cognitively for that. So what's the ideal f food pyramid? Not breads, pasta, rice, cereal, potatoes. What do you see on the bottom of the food pyramid? What do you see there, Cheryl? What do you see there? It's all, it's all protein and vegetables, right? Protein, good fat, and vegetables. And you can live a good, healthy life on that, plenty of energy, You'll lose weight so fast it'll make your head spin. Um, so you've seen this before. I don't want to spend too much time on it. I'm just going to give you a couple of uh, supplement recommendations real quick here. Uh, the first one is glutathione <clears throat> because this is what helps to repair DNA damage and it helps to detox. Um, let me get the volume up here. Deborah, I didn't forget about you. Tomorrow? I didn't forget about you. Can you really become the most powerful antioxidant that you have never 
heard of. It's one of the keys to fighting off the diseases that you fear the most. It is called glutathione. Now write it down because it's critically important. And here to tell us about it is the director of Yale University's Prevention Research Center and my good friend, Dr. David Katz. Now, Dave. So, glutathione has been described in, in many places as the superhero of antioxidants. But why is that? How come no one's ever heard of it before? Because unlike most antioxidants people think about getting in a supplement, this one the body makes. That's the reason people haven't heard about it. It's going on all the time. It's also the reason why it really is the most important antioxidant. It's the one that the body relies on itself to clean up critical toxins. So it's being manufactured all the time, and the body makes critical use of this to defend us against a variety of toxins. So I've got a little demonstration. I'm going to make this really clear, folks. This is absolutely essential. You don't have to have about all the things to do in your life, right? The foods to eat, the antioxidant vitamins to take. They all work through this. In the body, you've got glutathione. And you also have it looks just like cells. It. Looks just like this, yeah. right? <laughs> and so you've got these green normal cells, and you also have toxic cells. Some of these are from outside your body. Some of them are, are cells of your own that have been damaged by free radicals, and they've been oxidized. Damaged by the sun, damaged from foods, whatever. If you put in the normally existing glutathione in your body, it will soak up a lot of these bad boys, take them away, just like that. Now, if you don't have enough of the glutathione, now you put it in there, and you'll be lucky if you just get one of these toxic cells out. So you lose the powerful, natural ability of your body to heal itself. You know, we always brag about how the body can help you almost always recover, but only if you help it do that for you. That's what this segment is about. Okay, so what they found is a lot of the patients with Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and these degener neurodegenerative diseases, they're very, 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 very low in glutathione. So that's another reason why I like using this Ultraplex Complete Clean, not only because there's a good amount of protein to help me recover from a workout, or you can use it as a meal replacement, or um, use it as a, a multivitamin, because it has that, it has the antioxidants, but it also has a detox support. Now, now again, remember we said, as far as the heavy metals, this is a, this is a gentle liver boosting detox, and it also has something called N-acetylcysteine, which is the precursor that helps your body make what? Glutathione. That's why I like to take this every day because it helps to prime your body's ability to detox on a very low, consistent, safe daily level. Does that make sense, everybody? Now, this is very different <clears throat> from the advanced detoxification program that I spoke about, those three phases, the 90 days, because <clears throat> this won't address he heavy metals. But nonetheless, this is something super healthy for you to do as far as your brain health, your body health, and uh, it checks all the boxes, really, for everything. <clears throat> so I have this in the morning after my workouts. I mix it with water. You can mix it with coconut milk or almond milk. You can have it with berries, almond, almond butter. We'll talk more about that next month. But I wanted, to see, wanted you to understand how this helps with the glutathione. Um, you have this in your handout, uh, the Complete Clean, <clears throat> the vitamin D, uh, helping to ward off decline in, in mental function. Um, and then the EPA, the Ultraplex EPA, everybody should be taking these. Everybody should be taking a vitamin D supplement every day, an EPA fish oil capsule every day. Um, some of you should be taking two Ds and at least two fish oil capsules every day. I take four, and uh, that's based on what my testing showed. But the EPA uh, capsules helps to lower your blood pressure, helps prevent arrhythm arrhythmias, lowers your triglycerides, uh, prevents blood clots, which is super important if you were vaccinated for COVID because a lot of the studies are showing now the increased risk of blood clots in many of the patients who had the early shots. Okay, So you want to make sure you know that you're taking enough of this stuff, at least until we get to the point that we test you. <clears throat> prevents depression, prevents mental decline, and it's, it's an anti-inflammatory. Curcumin is also strong anti-inflammatory. Aches, pains, shoulders, hips, joints, back. Uh, it's most evidence-based literature backing it as a cancer support among all nutrients, and it helps to prevent the, the spreading of rogue cancer cells. So <clears throat> we put this in together so that you guys have an idea of what the, some of the most important anti-aging supplements are. 15% off only on the night of the workshop. 
There's never a time where we discount the supplements any other time. We want to incentivize you, encourage you, and reward you for being here and taking the time to continue to learn and grow and hopefully apply some of this. So 15% off that. that. That's Neuromag included. In fact, anything with a green Ultraplex label, whatever you need, you just let them know. Um, <clears throat> and um, Cal, I want to thank you for having me at the Franklin Academy. I haven't done a talk at a, at a school or a place of work or worship uh, since COVID. And prior to that, I was out in the community uh, serving and, and donating my time every week. Just There's people out there that need what we have. They're looking for answers. Some of you guys are here. I mean, it's, it's people sitting in front of me every time I do a consultation. And you're like, I've been, I've been looking for a place like this, it's like doing what you do. And they've been to the chiropractors, and they know it's not, they're not getting everything that they need. And some of them have never been to a chiropractor. Some of them are just, they're dying. They're literally dying for somebody to show up and give them the answers to where health comes from and how to get it when they need it. And that's why, you know, I, I saw this verse, I was thinking of this verse, Isaiah 6 8. And also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here I am. Send me. Send me. And this is what we do. We do lunch and learns. If you have a company, we'll go in. If you've got a good team of employees, we bring lunch. We cater lunch. We sponsor the program. Any of these workshops that I do in the office, I will do for your group. And uh, it's a community service. It's our way of giving back to the community to make our, our world a healthier place. So let me know if I can help you with that. Because that, that just reminded me. That, how important it was. All the people who came in from that were just, they were so thankful and it needs to be done. We need people out there doing that. So I'm willing to go. You let me know if I can help you, whether it's at school, work, church, whatever it is, you let me know and we'll follow up with that. Our action steps. We talked about next month's workshop. Uh, if you need to be tested for the detox, let them know. And um, if you need the resources, the supplements, whatever we have there for you, and if you're a guest and you want us to check you, uh, your nervous system, they'll make your uh, friends and family a special discounted appointment if you want to take advantage of that. Thank you so much for being here tonight, guys. I love and appreciate you. God bless.